In this video, we're going to look at how to find trigonometric ratios when given another ratio. And, and what I mean by that is, is, is problems like this. Find sine theta and tan theta given that cosine theta is some ratio. So we're finding trig ratios given another ratio. If you're ready to do that, jump ahead in this video, but I'm going to establish some background knowledge first. And so our foundational knowledge is, is first off, we need to know the trig ratios and their reciprocal functions. On the coordinate plane, we've pivoted from calling sine opposite over hypotenuse, and we call it y over r. Cosine is x over r, and tangent is defined as y over x. These three are our reciprocal functions, and reciprocal, remember, just means to flip it. So if tangent is y over x, cotangent of that same angle is x over y. This is pronounced secant. It's the reciprocal of cosine. And this is pronounced cosecant. It's the reciprocal of sine. Here's our second bit of foundational knowledge, and this part is, imp is important. Where is each trigonometric ratio positive or negative? Now, for sine, if we're looking for where sine is positive, remember, sine is defined as y over r, cosine is defined as x over r, and tangent is defined as y over x. So let's store that in our memory banks as we look over here. If I picture this as, you know, some angle theta with an x and a y, Previously, we made the transition to the coordinate plane by maybe thinking about this kind of like a right triangle, where this is x and this is y. And so what we got to think about is, where is sine positive? Well, we're calling r the hypotenuse. That's like the radius. If we thought of this like a circle, right? r would be the radius. And since that's a distance, we always think of it as positive. So that means this fraction will be positive whenever sine is positive. That means whenever y is positive. And y is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Anywhere we're above the x-axis, so that's positive in quadrants 1 and 2. That means it's negative in 3 and 4. For cosine, for the same reasons, it's going to be positive anywhere x is positive. And x is positive to the right on this x-axis. So that's in quadrants 1 and 4. So it's positive in quadrants 1 and 2. 4, that means that 2 and 3 are negative. Tangent is y divided by x. Now remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and a positive divided by a positive is a positive. So tangent is going to be positive anytime y and x have the same sign. So up here in the first quadrant, they're both positive. So a positive divided by positive is a positive, and down here in the third quadrant, they're both negative. So a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And then you still got your quadrant 2 and 4 where it would be negative. Here's a little way to memorize this. You ready? All students take calculus. They're all, all your trig ratios are positive here. Sine is positive here. Tangent is positive here. And cosine is positive here. All students take calculus. Okay? They're all positive in 1. Sine is positive in 2. Tangent's positive in 3. Cosine's positive in 4. Now that we're armed with our background knowledge, let's attack our first problem. This says, find sine theta and tan theta, given that cosine theta is 5 thirteenths and tan theta is less than 0. So I'll say step 1 is identify which quadrant we're in. Well, if I look at this, we see that cosine is going to be positive. If you're thinking of where cosine is positive, cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. We established that on the last slide. They're all positive here, and cosine is positive here. So I've, I've kind of got it down to a 50-50. It's going to be one of these two quadrants, but then tangent is less than zero. And i got to think, where is tangent negative? And tangent was negative in quadrants 2 and 4. In quadrants 2 and 4. So the only quadrant that fits both of these criteria, with cosine positive and tangent negative, that would be quadrant four down here. So we're going to be working in quadrant four for this problem, okay? And so if we come back here, I'm going to draw this relationship in quadrant four. We have some angle drawn here, some angle down here in quadrant four, where x is five. We don't know the y coordinate, but we know the radius is 13. So I, it kind of helps me to think of this like a right triangle, even though it's not exactly a right triangle. But we have a horizontal distance of x, and our x here is 5. We don't know the vertical distance, but we'll call that our y, and then the radius is 13. Once we have this, we know our x, we know our r, we gotta find y to write these trig ratios. So we're gonna find y using the Pythagorean theorem. That's why I like to visualize it like a right triangle. 
because we know that a squared plus b squared is c squared. In this case, we're going to say x squared plus y squared is r squared. And so 5 squared plus some unknown y squared equals 13 squared, or that 25 plus y squared equals 169. So if I come up here and I know that 25 plus y squared is 169, I'm going to subtract y squared from each side. And then I'm going to take the square root of each side and get that y is 12. Now, before we go off and we say that y is 12, we've got to be careful and recognize what quadrant we're in. The quadrant we're in is the fourth quadrant, which has a negative y value. That's why we can't completely think of this as a right triangle, because then this wouldn't make sense, because a right triangle can't have a negative side length. But what we do know is that the y-coordinate of this point on the terminal side of theta would be, um, you could think of it as 5, negative 12 would fit this ratio right here. So y is negative 12. So we, we, we knew that x was 5. We knew we were given that r, the radius, is 13. And then we're going to count y as negative 12. Armed with this information, we're ready to finally answer the question, writing our trig ratios. We know that sine theta, which the question asked for up here, is y over r. That would be negative 12 over 13. And then we know that tan theta is y over x. We've known what x was the whole time, but we just found out what y was. So tan theta would be this. Now, we got one final example. On our last example, we're going to find tan theta and cosine theta, given that cosecant theta is this, and tan theta is greater than zero. And you might start by saying, hey, wait a minute, what, what do we do with cosecant? Well, what we got to remember about cosecant from a few slides ago is cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. If cosecant theta is that, then sine theta is going to be its reciprocal. And if cosecant theta was positive, that means sine is positive. So I'm looking for the quadrant. If I'm going to identify the quadrant, I need to know when sine is positive. And what we know is sine is positive in quadrants 1, and 2, because that's where the y coordinate's positive, okay? Then we can come over here and look at tangent, and I think where is tangent positive? Well, tangent's positive in the first quadrant, because they're all positive there, and it's also positive in the third quadrant. So tangent is going to be positive here in the first quadrant and here in the third quadrant. Well, if I look at this, it looks like the only quadrant that satisfies both criteria of having sine positive and having tangent positive is going to be quadrant 1. So for this problem, we're going to be working in quadrant 1. And so I'm going to kind of graph our relationship and get a little visualization of it. I know that sine is 4 over root 65. So that means the y coordinate, I could think of it as 4. We don't know the x, and the radius is the root of 65. So our, a point that would satisfy this would be, you know, some x coordinate comma 4 would, could satisfy this, these ratios. Now, our job is to find x. So we come back over here and we use our Pythagorean theorem. I know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in our case, x squared plus y squared is our radius squared. x is unknown. y is 4. And our radius is the root of 65. Now, I'm going to come up here. x squared plus 4 squared, which is 16, equals the root of 65 squared, squaring and square rooting are inverse operations, so that's just a 65. So then whenever I subtract 16 from both sides, you get 49, and then when you square root both sides, x is 7. So we were given in this problem, we knew that y was 4, we knew that r was the root of 65, now we just know that x is 7, okay? Now, from here, we don't have to do any double checking because we're here in the first quadrant. We know that our x is going to be positive because it's positive in the first quadrant. Now, the ratios we were asked for are tan theta and cosine theta. We know that tan theta is y over x, okay? That just means 4 over 7. Next, it asks us to write cosine of theta. Cosine of theta equals x over r, which is 7 over the root of 65. we got to be a little bit careful here because we're not supposed to leave the root of 65 in the denominator. So what we do is we rationalize the denominator. I'm going to multiply by the root of 65 over the root of 65. And whenever I multiply straight across, we get 7 roots of 65 
over the root of 65 squared. And what happens whenever we take um, a number that's under a radical and square it is that those are inverse operations and it just leaves us with 65. So I do realize that appears like a gross way of writing our cosine ratio, but that is considered the most simplified form. And there you have it. That's how to write trig ratios when given other ratios.